and welcome to Let's Cook, an edutainment TV program that features fast, easy, and delicious international menus that you can cook at home. Now today I have a really big challenge and fun mission to help Lita out. Lita actually called me yesterday and said that her older sister is out on business in Singapore. That means she has to take care of her niece for the next few days, and of course, she called me to help her prepare some special lunchbox menus. Oh, Sorry, look who it is. Oh, here, let me help you with that. Here's wow. Ingredients you requested. What? It's been two hours. And wasted so much time on waiting for Butcher to grind the chopped beef. Oh, I see. Well, don't worry. Today's menu is going to be very, very special. In fact, it's going to be a mouth-watering menu, which is going to be a fantastic hit with the kids. Want to know what it is? Find out right after the break. Let's go. Form a ball outfit. Huh? Nice and easy. Huh? Good. You can kind of see it's caramelizing on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. You see it's and it smells so Yeah, and you can see around the edges amazing. of the hamburger. We're just going to add in a little at a time. Okay. And as we add in these dry ingredients, there we go. Always work from the center out. Center out. Yep, from the center. And make sure you're going every direction. Let's go. Welcome back to the show in our main dish. Is cheesy burger. My knee's gonna love it. Oh, absolutely. It's a dish that's not only great for kids, but in fact, I'm a huge fan of hamburgers myself. Me too. Oh, wonderful. Why don't we make some extra burger for us? I think that's the perfect idea. Now, to get started, we have to go over our ingredients as we always do. So, okay. can't have hamburgers without having hamburger. Mm -hmm. We have some ground beef, a little bit of salt, diced onion, mm -hmm. Black pepper. Black pepper, some chopped tomatoes, a little bit of mayonnaise, the cheese for the cheesy burger, and also some buns and fresh lettuce as well. So where do we begin? Well, the first thing you got to start off with is making the hamburger patties. Now this is the fun part. You want to start off with lean ground beef, about 85% lean. So eating lean means boost your intake of ions, which is the essential nutrients for red blood cells. Absolutely, it's a part of a balanced diet and really easy to find at your local supermarket. Now to start off with, obviously, okay. we're going to take our ground beef and we're going to add in our diced onions. Now, of course, since we're dealing with raw meat here, make sure you've washed your hands before and also wash your hands when you're done. So we're just going to add a little bit of our diced onion right there into the bowl and okay. start using our hands to mix it together. Now don't be, don't be squeamish, don't be shy about this. You just want to incorporate it together. All right, so we've incorporated that nicely. Mm -hmm. Now the next part we need to add is an egg yolk. So if you could help me out, just pour that egg yolk right into there. Egg yolk, okay. One egg yolk, wonderful. How do you separate the egg yolk and the white one? You know, that's an actually a really good question. Separating the egg yolks is really easy. There's a variety of techniques out there. You can do it with your hand. There's all sorts of tools out there. But I think for you, if you want to give it a try, use an egg separator. Oh, this one. That's what that is, absolutely. Look at this. So real easy, have a bowl. Take the egg separator, put it inside the bowl, and just crack the egg inside it. And when you lift it out, the yolk will actually stay inside the egg separator. So uh, we've nice and incorporated here. Actually, I need a little bit of salt. Remember a pinch from the other episode? Pinch of salt. Pinch of salt and some freshly ground pepper. All right, perfect. 
and I'll work that in. Now comes the fun part. So now that we've made our hamburger, mm -hmm. we have to start making the patties. We're going to divide this amount here into four, right? So we're going to break it in half. Can I do it? And then we're going to break it in half again. All right. Half. So half and half. Yep. We're going to take each one of these and form a ball out of it. There's one. So one down, real simple. Just roll it in your hand, make a nice little ball. Now it's important that we make these about roughly the same size because when we start cooking them, we want them all to cook evenly and around the same time. One left, and now we're all good. So now that we have these, now's the time to make the patty. And this is the real, the real simple part. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. Actually, I'll put it over here. Okay. Take one ground beef ball. Okay. Put it down. Put it down. Give it a squish. Give it a squish. Now you only want to squish it so it's about half an inch thick, right? Half an inch, yeah? So you can see here, it's about half an inch, right? If you make it too thin, it'll cook really quickly and it'll dry out. If you make it too thick, when in fact it'll actually be undercooked in the middle mm -hmm. and raw, and you really don't want to have raw meat. Now here's a real little tip for everyone at home to make the perfect hamburger, is you want to push down in the center a little. Make a little divot, a little hole, right? The burger will naturally cook, it'll actually rise in the center because of all the juices in there. Uh so this will make sure that it's starting off a little thinner and it'll cook perfectly when it's done. Now what we have to do is put them into the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. And this is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to firm them up. But number two, and this is a really an unknown tip, when you want to cook the perfect hamburger, you have to make sure that it's starting off cold. There we go. So, what are we going to do? Well, there are a variety of ways that we can do to cook the burgers. You can grill them, you can barbecue them, you can mm -hmm. fry them, you can even bake them. Okay. It really depends on the style you like. Which one do you want to try? I prefer frying. Well, excellent. Well, what we have to start off with though is as soon as you take them out of the refrigerator, mm -hmm. what we want to do is brush them with a little melted butter or even oil. So I'm actually using some olive oil here. We're just going to brush them on both sides. It's important mm. you do this step because number one, it's going to seal in all those juices when it hits the heat. Keep them nice and moist as well. What we want to start off with is about a medium heat pan here. Good that it's non-stick. We're going to add a little more olive oil to here as well. There we go. Don't need too much because there is that natural fat that we find in the hamburger themselves. Okay. Now here's another little trick as well. You want to make sure that the size of your pan matches. So you don't want to overload a pan with too many hamburgers. That will bring the heat down drastically and significantly and actually take a lot longer to cook. So if you're using a pan uh, we have here, I'd say we could probably do two or three burgers at a time. I see. I'm going to put the olive oil side down. Oh. And can you brush the top of these with some additional olive oil? Sure. There we go. All right. Perfect. Now while those are cooking, you can see there with the heat, that initial heat is going to sear the outside of that burger, keep all those wonderful juices in. It's going to take about four to five minutes for each side. Mm -hmm. What I'm actually going to do is I just turn the heat down because you don't want to keep that high intense heat going too long. Mm -hmm. We actually want a slower cook, seal in the heat, and be able to give that nice moisture in there. So we're just going to let them sit there. It'll take about four or five minutes and it'll be absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. But you can kind of see it's caramelizing on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. and you see it's and it smells so Yeah, and you can see around the edges amazing. of the hamburger. So do be careful when you flip them because we are having a hot food on here on the stove that has oil mm. so it can pop. Just be careful of your face. So. Okay. I'm going to take this. Oh, there you go. So another four or five minutes and we should be perfect. Well, I think our hamburgers are just about ready. Time to add the cheese. Ho oh, oh. ho. Cheese. How can I add? Yep, just put one slice over each one. There you go. Now you can use any kind of cheese you like. We're using cheddar today, but you can use Swiss, you can use Havarti. And it's only going to take about a minute or so for that cheese to get nice and melted on the top. Cheese is melting nicely. I'm going to turn off the heat mm -hmm. and remove the pan. That way it doesn't get burned. And we're just going to let them rest there for a second. Okay. Now what we are going to have to do next is prepare the bun. We're going to take our hamburger buns and toast them. Just takes a couple seconds to toast them. Mm -hmm. Nice and easy. 
One of the reasons why you want to toast the buns is because there's still going to be some juices left within those hamburgers. Mm -hmm. And you don't want it soaking into the bun and making it soggy. All right, let's see. Ah, getting nice and toasted. You can see there on there. Yeah, oh, yeah, so it's getting nice and toasted in there. Make sure you don't burn it though. Perfect. Now we're going to plate up and build our burgers. Okay. So oop, be careful, they're very hot. So what we need to do is put a little mayonnaise on there. <gasps> ah, yes. Then we're gonna take our hamburger. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna place it on top. So one for you. Thank you. Or actually one for your niece, I should say. Oh yeah, this one is for me, my niece. You, we can share yeah. this one. Excellent, one there. And now we need to add on the fresh ingredients. So a couple slices of tomato, or if it's a really big tomato, you can just put one on the top. Just one, it's okay. You can also add things like sliced onion if you want. It's really up to you. Maybe another little piece on there for us. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Put the bun on top. So it's ready. Time for the taste test. Taste. Mm, you want any ketchup on there? Not really. Just remember, like I said before, you can add ketchup, mustard, relish, whatever you want. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Tastes good, doesn't it? It is. Well, I'm sure your niece is going to love this when she looks in her lunchbox today. This is so delicious. Now, coming right up, while uh, Lita enjoys her hamburger, we're not done yet. We still have our <laughs> mouthful. See, our CIY menu, right on. And I bet that your niece is going to be even more ecstatic about this recipe as well. Don't go away, we'll be right back after the break. Oh, I'm sure your niece is going to love these adorable little treats. Yes. So what do we need? What are the ingredients? Uh, the ingredients are we have the all-purpose flour, some salt, baking soda, mixed nuts and egg yolk, mm -hmm. and butter, extract vanilla, and icing sugar. Icing sugar. Wonderful. So Well, what we want to do is, if you remember when we had this kind of stuff before, we have to combine all the dry ingredients mm -hmm. first. So what we're going to need is a nice big bowl to put it in, mm -hmm. and what we call a sieve or sifter. Sifter. Yep, mm -hmm. and we're going to put all the dry ingredients through this. You just pour the flour in here, and you can actually add the uh, baking soda and salt yeah. as well. Yep, go ahead, put it all together, it's all going to get mixed. There we go. And just give it a shake, so you can see there, eh, there's my flour. Ooh. Ooh. Give it a tap, and you can see here, if you look in the bottom of the, of the bowl here, look how mm. fine that is. So now that we have all our dry ingredients sifted and blended together, mm -hmm. now's the time to head over to our electric mixer. So we're going to combine our butter, butter, the icing sugar, and the vanilla extract. All of them? Put it all. Now we're going to put that inside the mixer. Here, let me help you clear this for you. Thank you. Sure. When you start up the mixer, if you put it on high too quickly, you're going to get a huge snowstorm. So we're going to push it in there, oh. and you're going to want to turn it on slowly, so just on the first. One? Just on one. You can always block your hands so to make sure that the powder doesn't come out if it's turning. But you can see it starts to combine very quickly. I'm going to add in the egg yolk, right? One egg yolk. 
There we go. Now here comes the fun part. We need to incorporate the dry ingredients. Yeah. Add a little at a time. This is a huge and important step, right? Don't just dump it all in. And as we add in these dry ingredients, what's gonna happen is it's gonna get thick and it's gonna start to form what we call a dough. A dough. A dough. You can see there that wonderful, rich cookie dough. Wow, look at that, huh? Wanna make sure we get all of it in the bottom, add it in, mm -hmm. wonderful. That is exactly how dough is supposed to look like. So what we gotta do is take these, roll them into a ball. Yep, just like we were making the hamburger patties yes. before. So we're gonna take this, put it into the refrigerator, and we need to leave it there, oh, about an hour. All right, as promised, cookie dough, done. Now mm -hmm. we wanna have a nice clean kitchen surface That's to clean. roll the dough out, nice and clean as well. We're gonna need a couple more things though, namely some flour and what we call a rolling pin. We're gonna take some of the flour and we're gonna throw it on there. Just a little, yeah? So we're gonna take some of the flour, awesome. yep, and just sprinkle it on there, rub it around. Not too much though, because we don't want to dry out the dough. All right, okay. that's more than enough, there we go. All right, now we're gonna to wanna to take this dough and flatten it out, mm. all right? And then we're gonna take our rolling pin firmly in both hands, and you're gonna to wanna to roll and press down, working out from the center. Center? From the center, so like that. Mm -hmm. So we're pushing it out from the center, always working from the center. So I think we're just about ready. Okay. One more little tool, and here comes the fun, fun part. We're gonna take our cookie cutters and we're gonna cut right into them. So you wanna get as close to the edge as possible because we wanna use all this wonderful dough. So you wanna make sure there's two sides to it. One's kind of sharp, one's more dull. So you wanna always wanna yeah. make sure. Yeah. So you're gonna take it, you're gonna press down, and then lift up. Now you're gonna need a baking tray lined with parchment paper, or if you have a non-stick baking tray, you might wanna use a little vegetable shorting. Mm -hmm. Just be very careful, we're gonna lay them nice and smooth there. If you can help me finish peeling them off. Peeling them off. Look at that, perfect. All right. Good job, teamwork. Teamwork. All right, now out of that dough, we got about, well, it has gotta be about 40 cookies here. Mm-hmm. Excellent work. Now that all that's left is add a little decoration, make it that personal touch. We used a cashew nut as its mouth. So mm -hmm. in terms of decorations, it's really up to you. Use your imagination, run wild. It's all about having fun and making things which are good, fast, and delicious as well. Now all that's left is to preheat the oven to 180 Celsius or around 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna put them in there for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. After that, we're going to turn the heat down to about 150 degrees Celsius for an additional 10 minutes. Do keep an eye on it though because ovens do vary and you want to make sure that you don't burn these cookies. After that, we're going to take them out and uh, see how they've done. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right, so into the oven they go and we'll be right back. Right after the break. It is. Be careful. I it's very it. hot, but you can definitely smell them, right? <gasps> now you're going to want to wait about five, ten minutes for these to cool completely. I'm going to pick this little bear. <laughs> mm. Is it good? Yeah. This is so delicious. Mm. You can use any, Sweet. any cookie cutter you want. Decorate them however you want. That's one of the best things about cooking at home 
is you can tailor every recipe to your own preference. My niece's gonna love it. Well, I'm sure she will. And, well, actually, we have a couple more batches still to go, don't we? Yes, we do. But we're not quite done yet. We still have... Three words a day. Three words a day. So we're gonna continue enjoying these cookies. Don't Finishing go anywhere. Up... Yeah, don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show in the Let's Cook classroom. Are you ready to have fun and learn three English words? So the first word of the day is... Patty. Patty, there we go. Now a patty is typically ground meat, beef for example, that is shaped into a circular. Mm -hmm. and we find it in the US, in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and is a wonderful way of cooking and preparing meat. Yeah, and today we mentioned that you can make the patty with the beef with pork or with chicken. We've made our hamburger. Mm -hmm. We have to start making the patties. The second word is... Cookie dough. Cookie dough. Well, we can't forget the cookie dough because it was a sweet ending to a perfect mm -hmm. day. So cookie dough is a combination of cookie ingredients formed. It's all nice and malleable, kind of like clay. Mm -hmm. And what happens is once we put it inside the oven, it hardens up into that wonderful crispy cookie. Wow, look at that. Huh? That is exactly how dough is supposed to look like. You can see there that wonderful, rich cookie dough. The last word, oh, here's a tongue twister for you. It's a... Sifter. Or a sieve, sieve. that's right. Now this is a kitchen utensil, which is used when, when trying to combine mm -hmm. dry ingredients. And as you can see, it's got a very fine mesh on the bottom. It's used for removing lumps so that when we make things like our cookies or our breads, it helps not only one, mm -hmm aerate the dough but removes all those nasty clumps which would be uh, not very pleasant if you bit into them. So what we're going to eat is a nice big bowl to put it in mm -hmm. and what we call a sieve or sifter. Sifter. Yep, and we're going to put all the dry ingredients through this. Well, we really hope you enjoyed our wonderful special lunchbox menu today. Remember, it was fast, it was easy, easy and most delicious. certainly, yeah, absolutely delicious. I hope your niece really enjoys it. She will thank you so much. No worries, no worries. For those of you out there who miss our show and can't catch up with the recipes, don't worry, you can easily watch us at our official website, letscook.com.mm. And if you're not around your TV, don't worry as well, because you can always catch us at the Let's Cook TV, streaming live online via your mobile or tablet device. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And don't miss our next show. Until then, no. Keep cooking and let's, let's cook. cook. The first word is sifter. Ah, sifter. Now here's an interesting term. Sifter, or actually it's patty. Patty, yes. Sorry. It's really easy to find, you know, at your local local suku. <laughs> like magic. There you go. Oh no, no. <laughs> we have the all purpose of all purpose flour, mm -hmm. icing sugar. Baking soda and salt and and salt of butter. <laughs> I think you need to try to go in order along here. <laughs> Otherwise the camera can't follow you. Hope you learned a lot. <laughs> Don't mix. <laughs> Let's go.